Somewhere beyond Mars, three I slash ATLAS broke formation. It didn't tumble or drift. It steered. Subtle, deliberate, perfectly timed. Inside NASA, the anomaly appeared for less than a minute before vanishing from the public feed, replaced by static and revised coordinates. But NASA kept a copy, and the pattern they found wasn't random noise. It was control. For the first time, space itself felt aware of us. When the asteroid terrestrial impact last alert system flagged a faint, fast-moving object that the sun's gravity could not bind, astronomers realized they were witnessing only the third interstellar visitor ever recorded, after Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019, both of which behaved like uninvited guests passing politely through the solar system. But three I slash ATLAS, first detected on July 1st, 2025, announced itself with an energy that felt deliberate. Its incoming velocity exceeded 42 kilometers per second, slicing across the ecliptic at an angle no planet could have delivered. The initial orbit traced by JPL's Horizons database looked perfect, a hyperbolic path bending just enough around the sun before accelerating back toward deep interstellar space. For months, the model held true. Observatories from Hawaii to Chile confirmed each coordinate with clock-like precision. Then, approaching mid-October, that certainty began to splinter. On October 21st at 0012 UTC, an independent analysis collective reported that their telescope array had captured 3.I slash ATLAS several arc minutes away from its predicted position. Their measurement placed it at a right ascension and declination that diverged sharply from JPL's October 10th update. The offset, 15.44 arc minutes, translated to roughly 1.1 million kilometers of lateral displacement at a distance of two. 38 astronomical units, almost three times the Earth-Moon span. That figure alone should have been impossible. Interstellar bodies follow gravity's script with merciless accuracy. Deviations of even a few hundred kilometers trigger re-evaluation of every observation involved. Yet three I slash ATLAS's range reading remained exact. No misidentification, no parallax misfire, no optical noise. The telescopes were locked on the correct target. But the target itself had shifted sideways in defiance of celestial mechanics. Analysts proposed software desynchronization, clock drift, atmospheric distortion, every conventional excuse they could test. Each one failed. What remained was an object holding perfect distance while sliding across its predicted sky track faster than any known gravitational influence could permit. Somewhere in the cold between worlds, something had stopped following the rule. The first instinct among observers was to blame data, not physics. The 15.44 arc minute gap, equivalent to 1.1 million kilometers at 2.38 astronomical units, was simply too large for comfort. Telescopes can misalign. Coordinate systems can lag. Reference stars can drift if their catalogs aren't corrected for proper motion. The team ran every diagnostic possible. Starfields were remapped against the Gaia DR3 reference grid. Atomic clocks synchronized. Calibration frames recalculated. Every check confirmed the same truth. The numbers weren't lying. The image plane was solid. The timing perfect. And yet, 3I slash ATLAS continued to sit where no software predicted it should. In orbital terms, this wasn't just a curiosity. It was a contradiction. If outdated ephemeris data had been used, the error should have leaned backward, placing the object slightly behind its projected course. But 3I slash ATLAS didn't lag. It led farther along its trajectory than Newtonian mechanics allowed. To move into that position, something had to apply force perpendicular to its orbital vector a sideways push through space. At interstellar scales, lateral movement of even a few kilometers per second 
requires staggering energy. For an icy nucleus roughly the size of a mountain, only asymmetric outgassing or gravitational assist could do it. Neither matched the pattern. Spectroscopy showed steady water and cyanogen release, no violent jets, no rotational bursts. There were no nearby bodies large enough to tug it laterally. The only variable changing was the offset itself. By late October 21st, the discrepancy was widening at 0.23 arc minutes, a measurable acceleration that defied the static elegance of celestial motion. The equations described a comet, but the sky displayed intent. Each pixel shift hinted that the object wasn't merely drifting through sunlight and dust. It was steering. For the first time since its discovery, the idea that 3.I slash ATLAS was under active control stopped sounding like science fiction and began looking like raw observation. In space, nothing just changes direction. Every motion, every drift, every orbit is the outcome of force and time. But the readings from 3.I slash ATLAS began telling a story that didn't fit those rules. At first, teams suspected a calibration slip or outdated software. Yet every test said otherwise. The numbers weren't wrong. They were ahead. The object was moving faster along its path than gravity allowed, as if it had quietly fired an invisible engine. Normally, when orbit predictions fail, scientists find a reason. A missing gravitational tug, mistimed exposure, a model error. This time, nothing fit. JPL system, updated less than two weeks earlier, showed a perfect trajectory. But new observations on October 21st placed the object past the spot it was supposed to occupy. It wasn't lagging due to old data. It was leading, carving through the sky on its own schedule. To gain a sideways velocity approaching 4 kilometers per second, an object its size would need a near-impossible energy impulse, something only propulsion could produce. Outgassing couldn't account for it. Spectral lines showed no thrust-producing jets. No nearby planets or asteroids were present to bend its path. The motion was smooth, stable, deliberate, as though guided by an internal process. Then came another surprise. Within the reflected light were subtle distortions, tiny flickers hinting at organized magnetic fields. Simulations showed the pattern only forms when ionized gases are being contained, not scattered. If true, 3 I Atlas wasn't just moving differently. It was managing the space around it. Comets brighten as they approach the sun, but 3 I slash Atlas dimmed. Despite venting more mass, its magnitude fell. Predicted brightness, 14.83. Actual, 15.112 about 26% dimmer than expected. Something was absorbing or redirecting light. Engineers noted the color spectrum, green, blue, faint pink, matching controlled ionization signatures. At first it looked chemical, until the color zones began separating into clean geometric layers. Comets glow in chaotic spheres. Three I slash ATLAS showed rings, edges, symmetrical boundaries, as if gases were confined within invisible lines. That idea was unsettling. If the dimming wasn't random debris, could the object be managing its visibility deliberately, reducing detectability as it accelerated? The numbers match the behavior of a ship trying not to be seen. High-resolution images from Chile confirmed structure. Under single-frame enhancement, 3 I slash ATLAS revealed edges where no comet should have edges. Geometry instead of randomness. The outer halo glowed green from cyanogen, cleanly confined. Inside, a blue ring pulsed with ionized nickel. At the center burned a white-yellow core fringed with a pink glow. The colors didn't blend. Each held its boundary as if electromagnetic walls separated them. Analysts tested for artifacts, comparing the field to control bodies. The geometry persisted through multiple instruments, nights, filters. 
Spectrographs revealed stranger behavior. Hydrogen lines fluctuated in precise 4.3 second rhythms, too regular for natural processes. Quiet disbelief spread. Some muttered about coherent plasma zones, non-thermal emissions, localized containment, words admitting the truth without saying it outright. Light near the nucleus was being engineered. Not long after the geometric images circulated, NASA's Lasco Solar Telescope recorded a strange object passing through its field on October 20th. A flickering cross-shaped burst of plasma. Most dismissed it as sensor noise, until researchers compared it to three i slash atlas's recorded position. The geometry, timing, and direction matched. Side-by-side -side processing showed that Lasco's luminous cross overlapped the color-structured regions seen from Earth. Two different instruments, in different wavelengths, had captured the same shape from opposite sides of the Sun. Hours later, a G4 geomagnetic storm hit Earth from X-class solar flares. Radio signals failed. Satellite telemetry faltered. Atmospheric interference spiked. Some assumed coincidence, but the timing was exact. If three atlas carried an electromagnetic field, a storm like that would distort it. Lasco data showed pulses synchronized with the flare. Many dismissed it as artifact. Others refused to ignore the correlation. Every orbit has a turning point, the perihelion. For 3i slash ATLAS, that would occur October 25th, 2025, at 1136 UTC, placing it directly behind the sun, invisible to all ground-based telescopes. Normally that's routine. Here it felt strategic. The geometry offered perfect cover for a major course correction. Spacecraft use similar windows, hiding maneuvers when sunlight blinds sensors. Perihelion is also the most fuel-efficient moment to change trajectory. As October progressed, deviation from the predicted path grew so large that models no longer agreed. One projection curved inward toward the sun's limb, another angled outward toward Venus's orbital plane. The actual position hovered between, like it was choosing its route. Its brightness continued to fall even as solar radiation increased. Every other comet brightens at perihelion. 3i slash atolls faded as if it wanted to disappear exactly when the world couldn't look at it.